All right, movies at the Tin Roof San Diego. Make some noise for Kevin Smith and Mark Bernardin. It's time for Batman Beyond. Welcome to a very special edition of Fat Man Beyond. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernardi. Hey! All right, kids. Uh, for everyone listening at home or watching live, and if you're watching at home and you're like, oh, man, the fucking stream is not smooth, that's because every motherfucker in the world is here and they're using the internet. Not here for us. Here in San Diego at Comic-Con. So we're hoping to stay online. If we get dropped off, uh, Josh is shooting the whole show, so we'll upload everything later on. But fingers crossed, we get to stay online. Um, that being said, just to take care of the technical shit, uh, we are at the movies pop up here at the Tin Roof Inn in San Diego uh, for San Diego Comic Con 22, the first Comic Con in the summer that we've been able to do in three years. Put your hands together so the folks at home know you're real. It took me so long to spit that out because I'm incredibly blazed right now. I had a, had a very long day. Yeah, go figure. You could probably smell it from here. I, was, uh, I had a pretty busy day, and then uh, when I finished before we were uh, going to do this, I was like, oh, I'm going to smoke all the weeds. And uh, I did because this show is always like, ah. Like, I don't have to worry about the show. I was talking to Mark before we went up. I was like, even if I drop the ball, and I will, Mark <laughs> – can pick it up and fucking run with it. One of my favorite parts of the show is Mark, and that's saying a lot because I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan and shit. Uh, so I was looking forward to this because uh, today I did two back-to-back -back Hall H panels. I was there for one of them. You went to one of them. I did. Uh, we did a Masters of the Universe a 40th anniversary panel. That's the one. And then uh, right after that, I, I moderated the Shatner on Shatner panel. Uh, so fucking with two Hall H panels back to back, I felt like Chris Hardwick circa 2016, man. Like, I felt like, holy shit, this is what it was like to be Hardwick back and in like the day. And like ice your, your vocal cords and like just, and like just massage, where you dude. leave the stage and then you come back for the same stage for the next panel. Um, but today was for me, of all the con days, the, the quote unquote toughest, and it's not really even that hard, but just in terms of process of el elimination. Every other day requires me to just go out there and talk about Kevin Smith's shit. Um, today required me to go talk about other people's shit. And that's always nerve-wracking in case, like, you fuck up or something. So I was, I'm was i happy I did them. Uh, I'm happy they're in the rear view now because I don't have to worry about them anymore. Now it's just fucking all downhill for me, man. It's smooth sailing. And not in a bad way. Like, it's all downhill. Like, every, I could be on autopilot for the rest of this shit because it just requires me to be Kevin Smith. And I could do that in my fucking sleep. <laughs> so I was looking forward to this moment, and I, I might have, I think it's clear I smoked too much upstairs. So no, you're doing great. Yeah. You're doing great. You may have to take over the fucking show for a little while. <laughs> yeah, just, just Kevin my leans mind back so and slides off the chair. <laughs> truly. I, I don't know. It was weird. I was just on stage with, like, a fucking icon. Like, Shatner is 91 years old, man. Motherfucker, like, laid the track for, like, pop culture. You know, he went to, like, some of the first cons and stuff like that. And, you know, I got to tell a story that I've been waiting to tell for a while. I don't think I got to tell it anyplace else. But we finally announced that William Shatner joined the cast of Masters of the Universe Revolutions. <laughs> Absolute huge get for us and stuff. Um, we've recorded with him. We recorded everything already. And I told the story on the panel, and I got to tell it right in front of him. And it was fucking darling. Um, you know, you record the voices well in advance for these things. So we've got most of the recording done. His is completely finished. I can't say what character he's going to play, so I'm going to keep it vague. So he comes in to do his performance. And, like, you know, again, dude's 91, but he doesn't have somebody bring him there. He fucking shows up in his own hot rod and shit. He didn't ride a horse? No, but no. he it would have been not surprising if he did because he's a huge horse fanatic and stuff. Um, today on the panel, he talked about 
ver I want I want to say dressage, but if I do, he'll be like, "You're an idiot, Kevin." Uh, it was called something else about horses that canter and shit like that. I I think it's dressage. It? Dressage? Was I right? Yeah, not corsage. I was, now you're fucking me up. Um, oh, I, I told it. It is dressage. Yeah, you killed it, man. I ain't as high as I thought, man. <laughs> fucking a. You found so, it. I'm, I'm still with us. So, you know, uh, when we were doing the recording for him, um, I was on a laptop because you don't put people in rooms together anymore because of COVID and stuff. So there's one person that goes to the location, the studio where they're on mic, and then a bunch of us are on Zoom, including Colette, who's our animation, the, the performance director. Um, she directs everybody. She's been doing it for years. She's amazing. I get to come along because I was a showrunner and stuff, and I, you know, I, they tell me I have directed from time to time. So I was like, maybe I can, you know, throw in when needed and blah blah blah. And also, like some cats said yes to the show because they expect you're going to be there, and, and if you're not there, it'd be bad. So Kevin I, Smith ball tickle a little bit, man. Hey, man, thanks for doing it. That kind of shit. So I'm there for every recording session, and periodically, I'll like, I'll be like, can we grab a reading like this? I'm looking for something a little more blah blah blah. So we're recording with uh, William Shatner, and we are like maybe one take in, and he's looking at the script and kind of going through and reading it. And, and I, you know, Colette was in charge, but I kind of jumped the gun because he did this delivery, and I was like, Bill, can we, can we grab, you know, the next one you do it, can you do it like super emphatically, like almost like you're mad? And he fucking, I'm on Zoom. And I'm on my laptop in my in my house. My wife is like sitting over to, on the couch reading a fucking book, not involved, but we're in the same room together alone. That's the key to marriage. <laughs> so I'm on the screen and talking, and I was like, can we could just grab one like a little more emphatically when you do it? And this was the counter direction that William Shatner gave to me. He goes, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. In a moment, you will have the pleasure of directing me. <laughs> right now, I'm just reading your script. And I was like, OK. And so um, Jennifer, my wife, is off to the side. She puts her book down. And she looks at me and shit. And I put it on mute. And I'm like, what? And she's like, it took Captain Kirk to get Silent Bob to shut the fuck up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So it was uh, fucking trippy, man, doing the panel. It was pretty weird. So yeah, he came up and uh, for the Motu panel to say that, hey, I'm on the show. And then I got to moderate his panel afterwards. But it was lovely, man. It was lovely being back in Hall H. <laughs> lovely being on the con floor. Uh, on the con floor, Lionsgate is releasing Clerks 3. They built a, a, a environment where you can go stand behind the counter and take pictures and shit like that. So I went to see that this morning. Looks phenomenal. They're giving out these cool ass quick stop bags. They look like this. You got one? <laughs> Fucking, you're lucky, man, because they did 4,000 yesterday and they gave them out in like a half an hour. And then they did another 4,000 today and they're just fucking gone. They also do like 100 of the posters, the con exclusive poster we have. So I got to do that this morning. Yo, can I have one of those, though? The bags? Yeah. I'll get you. I know a guy. I can I mean, you that's up. why I'm asking. Fuck I was yeah, like, man. I like a bag, but I don't want to wait in line. I can't make much happen in this life anymore, but if it's a clerk or a quick stop thing, I'm your fucking man, man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was just a long day, uh, and, and the rest of the days are me doing press for Clerks 3 or going to do a Hall H panel on Saturday or doing shows here. But today was the one day that was nerve-wracking. And when I looked at the schedule, I was like, if I could just get to Batman Beyond, like, that'll be a relief. So it's such a relief fucking being here with you at Fat Man Beyond. It's such a joy. Has everyone fucking had a good time at Comic-Con so far? For a second, I thought you were ending the show. I like, yeah, I was like, goodbye, everybody. Good time tonight. <laughs> Peace. I'm like, oh, shit, that was fast. We'll go a little bit longer. Um, it was so lovely to fucking be back in the environment. And I'm sure, you know, I experience a different Comic-Con than most folks. I know a lot of people have to deal with lines and, and stuff like that. Um, I've, I didn't meet anybody who was adversely affected by the line attitude-wise. Like, nobody like, oh. You don't know, I had to wait in a fucking, like, the moment people come in, they're just so fucking delighted 
to be on the floor. Number one, like, because you get to see shit. Number two, environmentally, like, the air conditioning is pretty nice. Although, for those at home, I know, I felt bad. I was reading the news at one point today, and they're talking about the heat waves across the fucking nation. But I was sitting at my hotel with a huge fucking breeze coming in, and I was like, I got to put on a sweater. <laughs> it's fucking nice down here, man. Really I mean, but it's still a little bit humid, though. Was there? I didn't feel yeah. I mean, you're talking to a guy come from Jersey, man. I know from humidity, this is nothing. All right, I was just sweating. That's all I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done today? What were you? You had panels, uh, right? I had panels I was on. There were lines that I stood in to get my fancy ass, like, look at me, I got vaxxed. Yeah, for those at home, uh, this, is, this was the new wrinkle this year for the con. Uh, you need this to get anywhere near the floor, and this is predicated on the vax. The, the right. You need this and you need a mask, which made yeah. me feel so much better about it than I ordinarily, because there's a lot of fucking people here. Like, it's, it feels like it's still a bit less than, than previous years, but it's like 80 or 90,000 people. 135,000. Really? Yeah, all weekend long, they sold 135,000. It's sold out, that was their cap, so they're sold out. Which is awesome to see it come back so strong. So once again, my numbers are off. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, I had a couple panels to do. I, you know, I had a tequila lunch, which was lovely. You guys, have you had just tequila for lunch before? Like, I, I've been living my life wrong, apparently. It makes the day fly by. I thought it was like a restaurant. You were like, I went to tequila lunch. You just literally drank tequila for lunch. I did, yeah. Yeah. I, I get behind that. I generally smoke my lunch, so. I don't regret my decision at all. Um, and, then, and then had another panel at 5.30. And the panels were... It's interesting being back in those rooms. It's interesting being back with those people because the thing that I miss about Comic-Con, and I think a lot of us have, is a community that you have when you're here. Because we're all here because we love a thing, right? Whether that thing is Star Wars or Star Trek or superheroes or Outlander or what we do in the shadows or Bob's Burgers, we all showed up because of that love. The love is what draws us like moths to a flame. And to be back in these rooms with people who came because they love a thing. You know, I've spent a lot of time on Zoom the last three years, and the thing that you miss on Zoom, like, it's great. I get to talk to people, I get to work, it's lovely. I don't get to accidentally run into people who I would ordinarily never meet and find that they would be my best friend if they weren't so weird. <laughs> um, because we're all a little fucking weird, but the, the, the accidental joys you get at Comic-Con are unlike any place else in the world because you never know who you're going to meet. But that person is going to love a thing as much as you love your thing. And that's just, it's the most beautiful place. Other than, like, Maui. But <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I didn't know how much I missed it until I got here and got a taste again. So, good to be back. What was the, your favorite thing that you did today? And while you ask that, um, while you answer it, I'm going to go close this thing behind us because everybody just keeps staring at us from outside. I feel like we're on the fucking Today Show and it's really unnerving. So tell them, a, yeah, JC, Banff, man, will you fucking put that thing up? Just slide it over. <laughs> just a little bit. Otherwise, there's a bazillion selfies of my fat ass back. And the lady outside is like, I think they're talking about me. Yes, motherfucker, stop taking a picture of me from behind. Aye, <laughs> poppy. Um... What's the coolest thing I saw today? Yeah. Dolph fucking Lundgren. Yeah. It was the coolest thing I saw today. He was on the uh, Masters of the Universe 40th anniversary panel. And, like, you know, I was doing the intro. They wrote down a bunch of stuff like, you know, oh, the Expendables, uh, fucking uh, Rocky IV. But the, the thing that I fucking bumped into, and I was like, wait, did I read this correctly? It was like, and a chemical engineer. <laughs> like, apparently, yeah. he's a fucking chemical engineer. Did you ever hear the story, I think we might have told on the podcast before, about the, there was a bunch of thieves who broke into a house in Sweden or whatever. And they're doing their thing, they're going through the rooms and they're taking the jewelry, they're taking the this, and they're taking the expensive stuff. And they get to the master bedroom and then they see a picture on the dresser of Dolph Lundgren and his wife. And then they're like, put everything back. <laughs> We're not taking it, because not only is he a fucking like, doctor of chemical engineering, he's got nine black belts and a bunch of shit. He's Ivan Drago. He will kick your ass from here to Sunday, and everybody knows it. And they're like, nope, all of it back. All of it back. Hey, Hans, don't fucking put shit back. Hans. Hans. We had a fucking racially profile, man. 
Dieter. Um, I saw here the thing, coolest thing I saw when I was on the floor today was a gigantic art por a portrait. I, I don't, I don't know. It was kind of put together by a bunch of different pieces, but it was Hong Kong Fui. Wow. It's fucking life size. It was like five foot tall. And I was like, I never, I was sitting there going like, I didn't realize how much I needed this until right now. But I was able to fucking walk away. You didn't buy it? Well, I'm, if it's there at the end of con, I might be like, all you're, right, let's haggle. Let's haggle. You're going to do your Sunday sweep? Like, hey, listen, my 50%. You don't want to put that back in the van. Let me just buy that for me. <laughs> exactly. And they'll be like, didn't you make clerks? I'm like, that's why I'm trying to get a deal. <laughs> all that money's gone. Um... What are you most looking forward to? I, 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 the Marvel panel has all of my interests, and I'm going to watch it from like backstage because my panel is right after the Marvel panel in Hall H. Can I come? Fuck yeah, man. Sweet. Because that's what I'm looking forward to that I'm never going to get into that room for. That, that panel? Yeah. Because yeah. I think we're going to see some, some Wakanda shit. You think so? Yeah. I think so. What else would we see? Um, well, they just started shooting Ironheart, so we're not going to You keep talking. They're that. still looking at me. Go, go, go. All right. Um, they just started shooting. Well, they've been shooting the Marvel, so we could see some of that. Um, there's a bunch of animation <laughs> stuff. What? I don't... I feel much better about that. <laughs> this is like the best episode of The Odd Couple. <laughs> Where you're just like, uh, Felix, they're watching us shower. <laughs> so Bamf. Oh, oh, it's Bamf Band, everybody. The premiere of Bamf Band at San Diego. Give it up for JC. I, I think I'm going to get in trouble because the entirety of the internet right now is freaking out that you guys switch sides. I, f I knew something was wrong. Like, something about it, I was just like, something's fucked up. Maybe I'm high. We're just in the wrong chair. And we never sit. We're always standing. It's no. Everything about this is backwards. I have the power. <laughs> yeah. It's also why you're signing Adora and Mark is signing tons of Funko Pops. I see. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah, when we do the news, we'll swap. We'll switch seats. Oh, yeah, better when we have to, to throw to the Blue Chew ad about making dicks bigger. We'll stand up. And we'll swap, talk about nuts. So it'll be like a metaphor. Right, yes. For an erection, right. just by standing. Standing, we're getting uh, a little height. We might as well welcome the sponsor now so we can get on to other things. Kids, tonight's episode, uh, it ain't, it's, it's, yeah, you can bring it in. Thank you. Will Wilkins, everybody. <laughs> nice. Ha -ha. He gave us a little Bane off mic. Um, tonight's sponsor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for this edition of special Comic-Con edition of Fat Man Beyond, uh, are the good folks at Blue Chew, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Blue Chew. Give it up and get it up. Now, some of you are like, what did we applaud for? Well, tell them, Mark, what Blue Chew is. Okay, hold on. Which one of the intros do you want to do? Because they gave us two. We could do, guys, it's time to bring that summer heat into the bedroom. Or, the temperatures aren't the only thing that's rising this summer. That one, the last one? Number B. two? B. All right. Uh, what, what voice should I use? Should I use, like, like con Jamaican? <laughs> because he's so well known for his Jamaican accent. Well, I did it once before. Do you have a character? Do you have anybody that you do? Oh, the judge. The judge. Kevin, I don't have a character because I don't have any lines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> One day. One, no, I don't want them now. Now, fuck it. I don't want your pity lines. <laughs> All right. I'll throw away that script I was writing yes. for Mark to be the lead in. Yeah. Oh, the Mark Odyssey. Well, <laughs> hello, Jason Muse. Uh, all right, let's read this out. It sounds like you've seen a Kevin Smith movie or two. <laughs> uh, temperatures aren't the only thing that's rising this summer. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. 
Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. It's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at Blue Chew. I'm starting to do the, like, the challenge. Yeah, you're going super fast. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no embarrassing visits to a doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And their tablets are made in the good old US of A, Patriot brand, Dick Bills, and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Do you have any uh, endorsement or personalization you'd like to add? Um, I mean, I, I can't beat their copy of here. I'll try it. Um, you know what's hard? Waiting in line at Comic Con. You know what's harder? Your dick on Blue Chew. So, if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code FATMAN at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code FATMAN, to receive your first month free. There you go. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. That gets the sober thing, safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast from we 1943. We do, man. We thank the good folks at Blue Chew for not only sponsoring this podcast, but offering free drugs on the internet. Give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. Blue Chew is your sponsor this evening. Uh, okay, we've got the ads out of the way, so what shall we talk about first? Is there news? There is some news, but I did want to talk just a little bit because we haven't been able to speak since the finale of Ms. Marvel. Oh, fuck. Yeah, all right, let's talk about Ms. Marvel. How many people here watched Ms. Marvel? Good nerds, good nerds. How many uh, people here have not yet watched Ms. Marvel? Put your hands together real quick. We're going to spoil a little bit, kids, but hopefully at the end of it, you're going to want to watch it a little bit more. Um, we've talked about it for a few weeks in a row. This show absolutely stuck the landing. The, the final episode, shit, the final three episodes were so incredibly emotionally satisfying, uh, dramatically satisfying. Uh, they did storytelling with characters and culture that I'm not achingly overly familiar with, so all of it was a new adventure. Um, the partition, it was a history lesson. I think you were the one that mentioned uh, like they're kind of doing what Watchmen did for Tulsa. For Tulsa, like introducing a bunch of, that's not my history, so I didn't know that, to some actual history, some heartbreaking history that happened. Tying the main character's secret origin into her own life in some mm -hmm. weird way. Um, in a perfectly poetic and kind of well-written way. A dazzlingly directed fucking show that like when I, I'm, I'm working on something now where I'm supposed to direct it, not this thing I wrote for me, but this th other thing that I'm writing for uh, uh, some other place. And I'm writing it with my kid and we were talking about uh, Ms. Marvel. I was like, you gotta watch this fucking show. I said, the directors of this show, I, I wish they would do the show that we're doing. She's like, you're supposed to direct the show we're doing. I was like, I'll destroy that fucking show. We should <laughs> hand it over to very talented cats. Like these are the same two filmmakers making Batgirl if I correct. No, if I heard understand correctly, um, the show made me the fact that I had never been a teenage girl. <laughs> try as I might, it, it, it was just so damn enjoyable. Her performance is magical. She's mm -hmm. a fucking star. Her and her mother together. Yeah, I so would beautiful. watch that show, and she don't even have to be a fucking hero. They're dynamic. They were so fucking charming. Um, but that powerhouse of an ending was incredibly emotional. Before. You get to, you know, the fucking moment when, uh, I mean, again, spoilers if you haven't seen this, close your ears, but it, come on, it's been all over the internet. Somebody fucking finally mentioned the word mutant. Yes. That, that her powers do not come from the bangle, they don't come from within per se. It's that, and I think her little science buddy says, there's a mutation in your genes that are giving you these powers. And then so satisfyingly, a little glisten of the, yeah, from the 97. Like, <gasps> <gasps> um, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, some cats online got upset because they were like, hey, man, she's an inhuman. She can't be a mutant. Don't make her part of the X-Men. And I was trying to follow the logic, like why one would feel 
passionately versus the other, knowing that Marvel in the movies takes some of their stuff and remixes it to do what they want versus what it was in the comic book page. And the common consensus I saw from a lot of people was like, if she's an Inhuman, she's the star of the Inhumans. If she's an X-Men, she's getting in line behind Wolverine and all the X-Men. Their fear is that the character will like, they're using her now to be like, hey man, mutant. And then later on they'll be like, hey man, everyone else. And she'll take a back seat. But based on how fucking charming that actor is, um, they could literally make her or Ms. Marvel, if they were gonna make her an X-Men, like the Kitty Pride or fucking Jubilee, like the youthful way into something. Like, you know, the way Peter Parker was kind of a, in the movies, a, you know, a protege of Iron Man, if you will. If they were doing something like that, then it, there's no chance that she would get discarded or something, that she'd become a main feature. Yeah, and also not every mutant needs to be an X-Man. Maybe she doesn't want to go to that janky school. <laughs> Maybe she's she, perfectly happy. She's like, I live in Jersey City. Why would I want to go to Connecticut? <laughs> Garbage. The swarm is awful in Connecticut. I don't know if it is. I'm just fucking with Connecticut. Um, and also, like, we've seen the Inhumans. Nobody wants to be the star of the Inhumans. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we four whole episodes of that, and we're done. Yeah. So, yeah, she let her be a mutant. Mutants are cool. So that's why what, what we're being told from breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, from the front row. Uh, the reason that she was an inhuman in the comics is because Marvel's like, no more fucking mutants. Like Wanda, they were like, no more mutants. They just didn't want to create new. So they were like, let's shift her over to the inhumans instead. So it's a return. Right, yeah, I'll enough. take it. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, but I absolutely love the show. I, I, I can't pay it any higher compliment than I'm watching it again. Oh. It was so charming and dazzling, so well shot. It's crazy. My whole life, I really didn't notice direction, probably because I had none myself. And now, more than ever, I notice like really wonderful direction. And that show, every episode was composed incredibly well, um, just shot and cut together incredibly well. And then you've got like some uh, some uh, fun characters that you want to live with and you want to know more about. I, I just absolutely adored it. I know I get fucking beat up online because they're like, you like everything, but I really loved this. I thought it was so fucking beautiful. And going into it, I was like, I'm sure I'll watch it, but like, it was kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi. When they announced that, I was like, I mean, I guess, but I don't give a fuck about him and shit. And then I watched the show and I was like, all I care about is Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> so the same thing with Ms. Marvel. When they announced it, I was like, I'm sure I'll watch it. I already paid for Disney Plus fucking free and shit. But then as I watched it, they really captured my imagination, my heart. Like, it is incredibly well done. What did you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Usually we disagree to a certain extent. Yeah. But I, I was riding for Ms. Marvel very early on. Like yeah. The first episode I thought was really charming, but then once you did get deeper into her, what she wants, what she's looking for, her emotional journey, and then the cultural sort of exploration, like I found it all just fascinating. And the ending felt a little small to me in that we're just going to have a fight in a high school gym uh, when we had previously gone to Karachi. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like and that's why they're like, look, we spent all the money like, going guys, to Karachi. We, like, which apparently in the last did. episode, we're gonna have one of those X Men fight in a gift shop at the Statue <laughs> of Liberty things. Yeah, precisely. You know, what happens to a frog when it gets hit by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. What happens to a movie when they run out of money? They shoot in the gift shop they at shoot the end. In the gift shop. Um, so yeah, it felt a little small, but at least it I was, was emotional. I was okay with them ending at the high school because it brought home like, oh, these are kids. Right. And the notion of like the government going in there with sonic weapons and fucking trying to blast kids. Like they had to put up a warning mm -hmm. at the beginning of the episode that, where they were like, you know, trigger warning. That there's some shit you may find yeah. sensitive. There's guns being fired at children. Yeah, which is, you know, yipes. But yikes. they it handled incredibly well. I, I, I like that. It ended in the school, and I like that it wasn't like, we got to save the universe. It's like, we just got to save these people right yeah. here. Because the stakes become emotional and not physical. It's not about 
maybe fucking Thanos does that thing. And can I, can, we had talked about the fact that how ridiculous it is that in Thor, um, that new one, that there's a suddenly an eternity where you can go and ask a wish and a wish is granted, but Thanos never is like, I'm going to just go to fucking this dude and ask a wish and I can get all of these things. I can just make everybody disappear with a wish. Did you just fucking jump out of Ms. Marvel? I just jumped out of Ms. Marvel. Shade fucking Thor? Week two shade on Thor, <laughs> which I've now seen three times and it, uh, it doesn't get better. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's not a bad time at the movies, but none of it makes sense, really. That's all. Just drive by on four. It really was. <laughs> um, all right, wait, back to Ms. Marvel. Back to Ms. Marvel. Um, and so, yeah, Ms. Marvel is done. We don't get more Marvel TV Until the at least. Marvels. Until, well, we get I Am Groot, the animated shorts, on August 10th. Oh, oh, on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, She-Hulk on August 17th. Which tomorrow they're supposed to, or Saturday, I guess, they'll show us something. There's a 1-800, no, it wasn't a 1-800 number you can call. Really? They passed out, yeah, they passed out these flyers that, like, you could call 1-800-She-Hulk or something like that. And there's a pre-recorded message that's... Is it like a porn line? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's how they're selling the show on Disney+. <laughs> Plus. <laughs> like, you know what'll work? Blowjobs. <laughs> um, no, hey, sailor. It's uh, her, you know, going like, are, are you an Asgardian who burns lawns when you leave and shit like that? So it's a series of, like, uh, inside jokes and stuff. But I thought that was cool. Like, uh, kind of old school analog to be like, hey, here's a phone number. Call that. Most of the new generation would be like, what are those? <laughs> Talk to a person. What the fuck? Talk to a person. So, yeah, there's still a bunch of Marvel TV coming. You know, What If Season 2 will come sometime this year. The Guardians holiday special at the holidays. Echo sometime next year, I think. Which is going to have Daredevil and Kingpin in it. Indeed. And then we have a bunch of shit that they haven't dated yet. There's Agatha, House of Darkness, Armor Wars, Daredevil, Ironheart, Loki Season 2, Marvel Zombies, Secret Invasion, and whatever the World of Wakanda show they're doing is. Um, so we're bound to get some of this information on Saturday, however, not all of it, because what's the Disney event that's coming up? D23 is in September. So and naturally, they'll hold some shit for there. They'll hold some shit for there, and they've also got a Disney Investor Day in November, I think, like late fall, where they will then come out and swing their dick around and tell people, like, no, you got to buy this stock. Why? Because here's the billion dollars we're going to make on X thing that we don't even know anything about. Fair enough. The big news that's supposed to happen, too, I saw yesterday was... Uh, Marvel's going to be confirming that they're working on a movie called The Mutants, which a lot of people feel is their first X-Men movie. Uh, the original name for the X-Men book, from, according to Stan Lee, was The Mutants. So it could be them going like, look, they've said X-Men a zillion times in movies, maybe we'll just do this instead. And also, there is the version of, and I think we talked about this a couple years ago, that X-Men is not necessarily the best name for a thing, given that half of them are not men. True. Um, just saying. Half of people are not men. But they get all the shine. Why? Can you explain the patriarchy to me, Kevin? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. I just know I'm not a part of it. Smart. Yeah, thanks. That's how you survive the culling. Exactly. Um, should we talk about some news? Fuck yeah, man. Let's dive into the news. You want to switch uh, places before we do the news? Is it really bothering you? It's not bothering me at all, but it bothers fucking Is Bantman. Is the internet still upset? Uh, not as much. They're growing, growing on them. Maybe we'll switch when we get to Scum and Villainy again. Fair enough. We'll just keep fucking with them. Let's see if we can live with this. Yeah. Well, but you're going to have to sign a bunch of shit over me. <laughs> all right, we should move. All right, then. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get my things. I have all of my things with my stories. Would you like this mic or should I take this mic with me? I'll say, while you guys are switching, Comic-Con, I walked the floor today and everybody had their mask on. And last month I was at Star Wars Celebration and nobody was wearing a mask. So props to San Diego Comic-Con for and the attendees for doing what they were asked. 
Yeah, they were very clear before anyone even got here that like they're gonna make everyone wear masks and they're gonna be the, the you know you gotta get in with this band and stuff like that. So good for them for looking out for us at this point because um, we can't be trusted to look out for our fucking selves. Like, as soon as you, like, everyone comes in with masks and shit, and then when you start talking to people, and they're like, I can't hear you, people are like, all right, fuck, and they pull the mask down and shit. So it's nice that there's someone looking out for us at this point, since we can't be trusted to look out for ourselves. Not at all. What am I doing with this? Uh, they wanted you to sign it as well. Why? They said, Mark, you're in okay. the movie, too. Can I write a shopping list on it? I am in the movie! You are. Nice of you to remember. I am. Um, Sounds fun. Uh, so, yes, the news. Hey, so you know what is happening that has not happened in, like, 40 years? Tell me. Kurt Russell is doing a TV show. Is he? He is. You know the TV show he's going to be in? Fucking Godzilla. Are you serious? Yeah. And he's you know gonna going to be in that, that was an Apple TV show? Or yeah, something? the Apple TV legendary show that uh, Max Fraction HBO is still Max. running. No, it's Apple. It's Apple. Apple TV. Why is it there as opposed to like HBO Max? Didn't they do King Kong or something? Um, HBO, well, Warner, no, well, yeah, Warner Brothers had the, the Godzilla vs. Kong movie, but I guess they were just not buying a TV show. Fair but enough. Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell. Oh, together. shit are going to be in this fucking Godzilla Oh, that's show. adorable. It is. Don't know yet what they're playing. They could be playing father and son, stretch. Uh, they could be playing um, the same character in alternate timelines or ultimate eras. Oh, that would be clever. That's cute, You know, man. so like Wyatt is playing 1970s Kurt Russell and Kurt Russell is playing 2020s Kurt Russell. I'd watch that shit, right? Evans, Yes. Yeah, the, one of the last TV roles that Kurt Russell had was in 1977 on Hawaii Five-0. Is that right? He that also played right. Elvis in the John Carpenter movie, right? He did. But wasn't it quite a TV show, though? That's true. Good point. Yeah. Um, and our boy, and we should stop calling him a boy, uh, Matthew Shackman from WandaVision. Yeah, Matt Shackman. Matt Shackman is directing the first two episodes. Fucking A, man. How'd yeah. he get that job? Why does nobody call me for shit, man? They're like, you direct that Kevin Smith shit, man. That's what you're good for. Well, because you keep saying in public, we should get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> they should, man. They should get somebody That's back. why. Stop right. doing it. It's true. Fair enough. All right. Um, elsewhere, Dune Pot De yeah. has started shooting. De. Dune Pot De. De the De. Uh, yes, has started production. So, thankfully, it is coming to us um, pre-Thanksgiving next year. Who have they added to the cast this time around? Uh, let's see. We have Florence Pugh, Leia Sidhu, Christopher fucking Walken, Elvis, and somebody whose name I can't pronounce, Austin Butler. Oh, I was like, <laughs> they got fucking Elvis for this picture? <laughs> um, Austin Butler's going to be in it? Elvis, Elvis himself. Elvis himself. Um, that's uh, joining a bunch of returning cast members like Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Brolin, Dave Bautista, Charlotte Rampling, Stellan Skarsgård, Javier Bardem, and Stephen McKinley Henderson. Fuck more Dune. Give it to me now. I'm sorry. Did I just get loud and hot about Dune? It's that fucking tequila lunch coming back. Yo. Feeling a little froggy. I might as well jump. Um, but a person who is not in a movie that we are looking forward to is Daniel Kaluuya who is not returning for Black Panther 2. His character's not. His character's not, and neither is the actor. I guess that would stand a <laughs> reason. Uh, why? Because he was working on Nope? Yeah, all right, moving on then. That was it. He was working on Nope, right? <laughs> yeah. So he would have come back if he wasn't. He would have come back, although to be fair, Wakabi was probably in prison. That's you know, what, that he yeah, had Fomenta yeah. revolution that got quashed, and that's what happens to insurrectionists. They go to jail. <laughs> oh, Mark, you must be watching television or something. You and your movies. Um, yeah, I asked my wife. I was like, are you going to come watch Fat Man Beyond? She goes, fuck you, the government. <laughs> because right now they were doing the, the hearing. They, they did yeah. a primetime version of the January 6th hearing. So she was way more interested in that than this. I mean, fair, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. Um, apologies to all of you. 
could be seeing the fall of a republic. Prime time. <laughs> Uh, more Black Mirror is coming. Did you know they were making more Black Mirror? Yeah, but I, I knew they were eventually going to. Uh, he does most of the writing and stuff, so we're kind of, you got to wait for him to let the genius pile up, Charlie. But uh, I knew, they talked about it. I remember, like, you know, what was it, a year ago or two years ago, he said something where he was just like, the world is way worse than Black Mirror. I'm going to wait a minute and shit, so... <laughs> I think he figures that things are getting back to normal. It's time to horrify everybody again. Uh, one of the greatest fucking television shows ever produced. I mean, does it count as a television show if it's a streamer? It does. Um, if for no other reason than some brilliant storytelling, um, uh, you know, even the stuff that's not horrifying. They got two pretty emotional episodes, San Junipero and, uh, was it Hang the DJ? Or, or I forget what the other one's called. Beautiful. But man, oh man, this was the show that made the British PM fuck a pig. Like, an amazing episode of television, which, like, sounds immature, but when you watch it, you're like, that is what would happen. Like, he so would damn fuck good. that pig. Yeah, you'd have no choice. Uh, so, yeah, they've, at, they've announced a bunch of cast members for season six, but, and, you know, it's like Zazie Bates, um, Josh Hartnett, Aaron Paul, Kate Mara. Um, but Kevin, Kevin Smith on that list? I uh, did not see Fuck. Kevin Smith. No, I'm sorry. Damn it. Um, the thing that's troubling, though, is that it's unclear if Charlie Brooker is returning to the show. What? Yeah. No, he's the mastermind. He is the show. mastermind, indeed. But it's been, lim it's been in limbo for three years since season five aired, mostly due to production companies changing hands over the past three years. And he is currently slated to produce something else for Netflix, and his production company is apparently not. He left one company, started another one, so it just it's unresolved whether he is going to be the one continuing the stories of Black Mirror. I mean, I would consider him a key man. Like, uh, that show is him. He is that show. I interviewed him at the New York Comic Con once. Lovely dude, but yeah, that's he's very much... Without that dude. The author of that thing. Um, well, that's a bummer. I mean, but... No, that's a bummer. I was going to say, well, at least we're getting Black Mirror, but is it Black Mirror if it's not Charlie? Indeed. I didn't mean to break your heart that quickly, but hey, there's going to be more Powerpuff Girls, though. Well, I only care if Craig McCracken's doing it. He is indeed. Yes! We, we did it, you guys. We I met him years ago when, during the first incarnation of the Powerpuff Girls. Lovely dude, and, and I loved that show. That was right. Like My kid was young, so I had a good excuse to be like, oh, we watch it for her. But I loved that show. It was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, so he's rebooting it. It's expanding the, upon the world of Blossom and Bubbles and Buttercup, who face off on a variety of villains composed of familiar faces and new threats. Um, in addition to that, he's also reimagining or rebooting Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Also his show, yeah. yeah. Another great show. Um, apparently, the CW is still working on the live-action reboot of the cartoon. The one that they were like, we're not doing that. The one, yeah, the Diablo Cody written version that uh, that they ran. Was far, that far away Diablo from. Cody wrote that? Yeah. Wow. So apparently, there's going to be lots more Powerpuff Girls in our future. You know what else is in our future on Disney Plus? Tell me. Dirty stuff. What do you mean they're going to do? Deadpool grow one and two and Logan are premiering on Disney Plus tomorrow. Are they putting them in a special category? No. Just dirty shit on Maine is what they're doing. <laughs> dirty shit on Maine. They're not even sliding the DMs. They're just fucking like, look, it's that dude's dick. It's sodomy. Um, well, kids. that's a good sign. That means there must be like, we got to get them used to the idea that Disney will be dealing with Deadpool because that'll be next. And so Deadpool 3, which they've guaranteed us is going to be just as filthy as the other two Deadpools, this is a little bit of a heating the water so that we're all not freaked out. Um, I, I think most people can handle grown-up Disney by this point. I don't think anyone's going to be like, <gasps> what? They said fuck. Uh, at the panel what we, that I did with Shatner, mm. he said fuck, and I was like, oh, my God, hearing you say fuck was great. And he goes, I say fuck all the time. And then he proceeded to do a litany of fucks. And then at one point, somebody was like, why don't you guys have a curse off and shit? And so, fucking from Star Trek, he pulled out double dumbass on you. It was pretty sweet. And then he outcursed me, man. I fucking Ow. instantly fuck. I, can you believe it? What? I shrank in the face of fucking Captain Kirk. I was like, he knows everything. 
the motherfucker like pulled out the Kobayashi Maru on me and shit. He was just, he was so good at it. It was good. I was, I was hoping you guys would have done a two-man rendition of that scene from The Wire. Remember the scene, season one, episode like five, where they walk into a crime scene, it's Bunk and McNulty, and the only word they utter for four minutes is fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that scene. And so it was just like, fuck, motherfuck. Fuck. Mother fuck. 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 Like tracing the gunshots and like moving the fridge like fuck me. I remember that. Yeah. Fuck. So I would have loved that. Can you do that? Can you call Bill and just do that for me? I, we'll make a short film just for you. Thank you. You just put it on my voicemail and I'll just play that when I get sad. Done and done. Um, we have two more pieces of news. One of them is weird and the other one is sad. The weird one is that director Joe Dante is of the firm belief... Joe Dante, who directed such classics as Gremlins. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Inner Space. Indeed. Did, uh, did he do Honey, I Shrunk the Kids as well? No. No, I think that's Chris Columbus. No, that's definitely not Chris Columbus. No? Um, I mean Joe Dante. But uh, Joe Dante's done a bunch, and He's a very a storied career in some of the, the best 80s movies... Uh, of an era. Indeed. He is positively convinced that Star Wars ripped off Gremlins for Baby Yoda. I don't... I mean, they're both small. Here's his quote. If I remember correctly, wait. Baby Yoda is just Yoda. Small. But not, but not Yoda, but like the species. So right. once you got a Yoda, if you young him up, it would only... His analogy works if... They had a gremlin who was fucking six foot tall, and then they made gremlins and made them small and shit. But Yoda was a thing, and then they just made them little. And if I remember correctly, Yoda happened before the gremlins happened. Yes. Um, so uh, according to Joe Dante, who told the San Francisco Chronicle, I think the longevity of the films is really key to this one character, Gizmo, who was essentially like a baby. Which brings me, of course, to the subject of Baby Yoda, I'm not sure how that's enough. I was going to say, how does one make that instant connection? He's like, which brings me, of course, to Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. I would have never been there. But brings him, of course, to Baby Yoda, who is completely stolen and is just out and out copied. Shamelessly, I would think. Oh, he's got thoughts. <laughs> he's wow. Got, he said that in a major newspaper, he, not even to somebody online? He said it out loud. Wow. Like Bamf just himself. Oh, hey, Bamf Man is here. Is a Star Wars story. You better have an opinion. Uh, I'm not gonna say that I know anything about paying homage to a space opera, <laughs> but I think Joe Dante is full of shit. Wow, that was very measured. <laughs> Explain. I mean, you know, they got both got big ears. Gizmo. Like, look, if if you couldn't feed Baby Yoda after midnight there'd be a problem. <laughs> if you yes. couldn't get him wet, there'd be a problem, but yes. I think they're pretty safe. Agreed. I didn't see it myself, and I have nothing but respect for Joe Dante, but I was like, oh, that's a stretch. That's like me fucking going like, you know, hey, man, did you ever see uh, fucking uh, The Bear? No, not The Bear. What was the movie? <laughs> the Bear. What was the movie with fucking Leonardo DiCaprio where a bear tries to eat him? Yeah. The, the Revenant. The Revenant. Yeah, that, that would be the like, bear. I, pre the, I prefer the bear. the bear. That would be like me going, hey man, did you ever see The Revenant? They stole that from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> because there's bears in it. <laughs> yeah. They did. They did. Uh, so yeah, Joe Dante is uh, in, a, in his own private Idaho, I suppose, having feelings about Grogu that are unclear. So it's, I'm, uh, the only thing that bums me out about this is I'm sad that he doesn't get to enjoy Baby Yoda like the rest of us because he looks at Baby Yoda. He don't see Baby Yoda. He sees the Mogwai. Yeah, he sees a shaved gizmo. Yeah. So just the rest of the world is like, we fucking love Baby Yoda. Saved us from the brink of extinction. And he's the one guy that's like, man, they stole that shit. <laughs> you just hate watching it over and over and over again. And <laughs> yes. it's like darkened rooms. Like, fucking there it is. I think fucking took it. Look at him. Look at you. Look, he left Luke Skywalker to be with his friend. And Joe Dante's like, I fucking hate this show. <laughs> yeah, so r roll it back. I want to watch it again. <laughs> Give me my fucking money. Uh, he, Joe Dante has done an incredible body work. So he's more than entitled to his opinion. But I honestly don't see it. 
especially when Yoda came first anyway. Um, but, you know, not everything that just went small is stolen from fucking gremlins. <laughs> Otherwise, you could say, like, my dick was stolen from gremlins as well. Do you feed it after midnight? <laughs> I try. <laughs> Can't get it wet, though, no matter how hard I try. Uh, and our last piece of news is, uh, is the sad one. And it's, again, we have covered stories like this on a frequency that had hitherto before uh, been, been remarkable. The, the passing of comic book legends. Um, Alan Grant passed oh. away today at 73 years old. Um, in case you're not familiar with Alan Grant, he co-wrote uh, Judge Dredd and Strong Team Dog for 2000 AD for almost a decade. He created the Bat Villains Anarchy, the Rat Catcher, Ventriloquist, Mr. Mr. Zaz. Zaz. He created Mr. Zaz, Victor Zaz. You know, he wrote uh, Detective Comics, uh, a couple of amazing runs with Norm Breifogel on art. I discovered him, discovered him, he's my fault, I fucking plucked him out of nowhere. I encountered him first when he wrote a Batman Judge Dredd crossover called Judgment in Gotham. He wrote a, a fantastic run on Lobo with Simon Bisley doing the art. And if all of this wasn't enough to hallow this dude in the comic book Hall of Fame, he discovered Alan Moore. How? He fished a script out of the unsolicited submissions pile at 2000 AD. And I was like, I think maybe that kid could write some comics. And wow. he was right. Um, you know, it's unclear. 73 years old might have seemed uh, old 50 years ago, but now if Shatner can be 91 and still fucking kicking, 73 is uh, it's too young to go. Uh, especially for a dude who just seemed to love writing comic books and, lo and wrote some of the most remarkable ones that we've seen in, in many a day. Um, his run mm -hmm. on Detective with Norm Breifogel was one of my all-time favorite Batman runs, not just for like, you know, Mr. Zaz and stuff like that, although, I, which was a fantastic character when they first introduced the notion of like, this serial killer marks his body for every fucking kill. It was like one of the most metal things I'd ever read in a Batman comic. But those two created so much joy for me in the stories that they told. I loved Alan Grant's storytelling and I loved uh, Bry Fogel's art when he depicted what Alan wrote, man. That's a big loss. Um, a hell of a writer um shit and that just makes me feel very old when your heroes start dropping i don't know i guess i should be thinking about him instead of thinking about me <laughs> i'm like god if he's dead i must be really old um what a legend let's give it up for the great alan grant ladies and gentlemen uh is that all the news that's fit to print that's all the news I copied and pasted from the internet. Kevin. Give it up for Mark. He gave you the news, ladies and gentlemen. He gave you the news. Uh, okay. Um, we don't have a second sponsor, right? We do not. No, no. We're just about dicks today. <laughs> there it is, yes. So remember our first sponsor and only sponsor of the night, Blue Chew, ladies and gentlemen. Gives you a little extra fucking something. Just not, not words. Um, shall we dive into the Q&A of Let's it all? Let's fucking do it, man. We came weird. all this way. It's true. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we always kind of get to this point of the show where we open it up to the audience and uh, we do Q&A. Do we have prizes to give out? We do. Uh, Brett Deacon dropped off some 4DX tickets. Uh, Our good friend left. Brett Deacon who works at 4DX and ScreenX. So he's given us tickets. And then um, somebody, Gentle Giant or somebody, sent me a whole box of really cool Mandalorian stuff. And the people who received it at the bar lost the note. So I'm not quite sure who it's actually from. But uh, props to whoever sent it. Gentle Giant Mandalorian bookends. And they're pretty heavy. So we got some good stuff. Fucking All right. So we got prizes, kids. If you're question gets picked and you ask the question you could walk away with uh 40x tickets you could walk away with um mandalorian uh mythosaur bookends that's that. right can i have them i'm just i just want shit <laughs> free shit because <laughs> it's comic-con you're like can i put it in this bag you just gave me take that swag back 
Um, all right, so there it is, man. We're going to leave uh, JC, of course, to pick the folks. Um, and uh, that way we don't get in trouble later on. Me and Mark don't get yelled at. Uh, who do we got, JC? I'm handing the mic over to this guy right here. Matt. Hey, Give man. it up for Matt, man. <laughs> Looks very familiar. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, expensive to look this silly. <laughs> yeah, tell me yeah. about it. Um, that's awesome, man. I've, uh, I've, I've, over the years, of course, I've seen a lot of Silent Bob, and then when I wore the hockey jerseys, I saw people do that. The purple jacket, Silent Bob, uh, Kevin Smith is a new one, but yeah. it's fucking on point. I was hoping you would wear it today, too, but... I, I probably am going to wear it tomorrow. Okay. Today was, since I was kind of doing the panels, I wore this. Because I'm going to get the, the photo op with you in Comic-Con, uh, the clerk's thing, what is it, One thirty tomorrow? What? Oh, when I, we the, go to the booth. The self, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me yeah, and uh, a bunch of us from the movie are going to the Lionsgate booth in separate shifts. I think I go by myself at like 1.30. I'll be there. Take pictures behind the counter, but, fake counter. you know, if you have a mask on, then it's like half a picture. That's but, true. Yeah. I'll probably have my mask off, to be honest with but, you. you know, I just good. said fucking. Because I'll pull it down to, you know. To show off. It sounded dirtier than I meant to. It I really did. Mask. Once you were like, I'll pull I'm, it down, I was like, you better no, pull it hard. Pull my mask down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, ask away. Yes. You two are so cute. So this is a little little morbid, but if you guys knew you were going to uh, leave this mortal coil, what would your last meal be? And and it could be anything from like your grandma's favorite dish to like your favorite restaurant. What would your what would your like if you could have five courses? What would your last meal be on earth if you could have it? Number one, I love this question. Thank you. Uh, number two, I'm really going to put some thought into it because I didn't think about like when you brought up it was something you could have been something your grandmother made. Right. I'm like, holy shit. So what does that mean? Like even though my grandmother's dead, they got to bring her back from the dead? To, yeah, or someone knows how to make it exactly. It'd be worth it alone just to see my grandma again, man. Yeah. Be like, oh my God, let me tell you what's happened. Like, let me say this to you, clerks. Like, you know, she yeah. missed all that shit. But they would still make you your favorite food or something. Yeah. All right, let me think. It's weird because, like, on one level, you'd imagine and be like, oh, eat something non-vegan because you're vegan now. And, and you're going to die tomorrow. And so you're going to die matter, tomorrow. And, yeah. So you might as well take an animal out with right, you. Right, right, exactly. Um, I don't think, there's no meat that I miss. I don't miss anything that I'm like, oh, I used to eat that, now I don't. But I'm telling you, you captured my imagination with the grandma thing. Because right then and there, I was like, I hadn't thought about sentimental or nostalgic eating or eating to bring back a piece of the past like that fucking ratatouille eating yeah. <laughs> when he eats and he fucking becomes a little boy and shit like that give me that ratatouille shit yeah some of that yeah. ratatouille eating so my ratatouille eating moment i think would probably be i'd ask for i'd ask for my grandmother's um dumplings she made dumplings oh. but not like normal dumplings like if you get them at like a chinese food place where it's stuff wrapped up in a little like a ravioli these were just globs of fucking dough, and she'd boil them and like shit. Like chicken and dumpling, southern kind like of. Like that thing. kind, of very Asian much ones. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But she was like, she come from Polish stock, so she always maintained it was a Polish dish. And then one day I went down to the south, like your grandmother was fucking lying, bro. <laughs> uh, but I would, you know, I haven't had that since, like, not since she passed away. She lost her sight before she passed away. So for the last 14, 16 years of her life. She couldn't do any of the things she enjoyed doing, which included fucking cooking and stuff. So it wouldn't only be like, oh, my God, my grandma's been dead for a few years, so I haven't had these. This would go even further back, like right into like the fucking heart, the crotch of my childhood, if you will. So I'm going to say that. That sounds problematic. A little bit, especially yeah. with grandma being involved. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say grandma's dumplings, man. They were pretty magical. Good question. What about you, Captain? Um, I don't go as far back as my grandmother, but I remember when I moved out of my, my, the parental home, my mother gave me a, she made a cookbook. And so in this cookbook, and it was a thing she just made on a fucking photocopying machine. There were no drawings, sadly. It was like, mom, come on, step up your game. <laughs> but Your graphic presentation is yes, weak, mother. I mean, even Word has enough fucking bullshit clip art you've got to put in here to dazzle it up. But it was like this 10-page cookbook of all the things that she used to make for me that I would then be able to now cook on my own. That is adorable. I've never made anything out of that cookbook. <laughs> you are an animal. Um, 
mostly because my mother, thankfully, is still alive. And while she is still alive, she I, would, could do it. I would rather she do this than me fuck these things up. What I hear is you're just, be, the note behind the note is you're incredibly lazy. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> um, but there's a thing that she used to make, and it doesn't even really have a name, but it's, it's based on rice and beans. Rice and beans was... I, I mean, love rice and beans. What kind of beans? These were um, black-eyed peas. You're picking Ooh. a vegan dish? No. Because what she would then do, she'd make a big pot of fucking like rice and peas, rice and beans, and then she would take whatever meat had been left over over the course of the week and just throw it in there. And so it was always this like, it was a like, mom's working late and it doesn't take a lot to cook a fucking bowl of rice and it doesn't take much to do this, but it was this kind of like climactic meal of a week that had gone by that she made even though she was busy and tired, but had to put something on the table that she knew that was good for us and she cared and all that stuff. I haven't had that particular dish in 30 years. I would want that. Because, like, I'm not going to make it. My wife, is just, she's not that person. Um, she has made a couple of other. Red, like, my mom makes a great fucking ham. Sorry, Kev. Um, <laughs> which we'll have for Easter. But, like, that particular thing, I haven't had since I was a kid. And that's the thing that I would want before somebody kicks me off of this mortal coil. Awesome. Thank you. Can Excellent fucking question, yeah. man. Can or like brisket after, from after. Austin, maybe. Um, you get to grab some uh, ticks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Man, give it up for him, man. It was a hell of a question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, JC. Bring us another victim, if you will. Howdy. Hi, guys. What's your name? Uh, it's Jabalani. Jabalani? Yeah, Everyone give it up for Jabalani. Is that right? Um, so I wrote this down because I don't want to mess it up. First off, welcome back to San Diego. Thank, Thank you. Um, I've been a fan since 94. A fan since 94, Kevin. Thank you. Fan since Static Shock. I don't remember the year, but uh, that, that's, that's what brought me that. in. Fair enough. <laughs> so um, congrats on the Eisner nomination. And with that Thank is the vein you. of my question. So given that awards are named after living people, real world people who, uh, for their accomplishments, their personalities, their achievements, I wanted to know, given the opportunity to name an award for your co-host, what would that award be for, and how would you describe the actual award? And if JC could then give it to both of you. All right, so I gotta come up with the Kevin Smith. The yeah, Smithies. The Smith, or no, the Kevins. Sure. The Smitties. <laughs> um, I think it would be an award for longevity. It's, it's a career- In the bedroom. In the bedroom. <laughs> Brought to you by Blue Chew, you guys. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's ultimately it's a lifetime achievement award. It's a, the person who has, over time, displayed a commitment to his craft, and more than that, a commitment to the audience who receives that craft. Because I've never met a person who does this job who loves his audience more than Kevin does. I've never met a person who engages with his audience as often and, and as substantially as Kevin I does. I mean, we're here. I mean, we're all fucking here. <laughs> And so the, the ability to stay connected, not just to where he came from and not just to the fan inside of everybody, but to make that an integral part of the way he does business and the way he makes movies and the way that he conducts himself in the world. And not enough people do that. Not enough people can demonstrate that level of affinity for the people for whom they share the planet with and share his art with. And so, yeah, I would give the Smitties to somebody who just loves doing the job that he does and loves the people he does the job for. Any design for the award? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a brass-plated baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, blunt was easy, but I'm sure there's blunties if you have not already sold blunties as a <laughs> trademark. Um, I thought that was nice. My award for Mark is definitely a writing award, um, but let's narrow it down because they give out plenty of writing awards. This is a writing award that you give to a writer, to an author, to a creator that has created five or more things that make you go, fuck, I wish I had done that. <laughs> Um, it's a very specific award that only certain writers could win, but he would absolutely uh, be the first recipient, and then the award would be named after him. We would call it the Bernies. <laughs> and um, it would be shaped like a dick. 
oh, just you. because it would have a secondary use other than just being a trophy and shit. And I don't know, JC, if you, you want to bring it up. Banff Bam, what do you got? Uh, um, well, Mark's kind of stole mine. I thought uh, commitment to wearing backwards baseball hats. <laughs> yes. Where, like, I'll take you know, that. Like Ken Griffey Jr. might get the first one, and then on, so on and so forth. I laughed, even though I don't understand that <laughs> reference. Yeah, that's the three sports, sports people, yeah. And then for Mark, I would do cheeseburgers. Best cheeseburger of the year, because during the pandemic, he did his cheeseburger competition. Yeah. He did the run, that's right. I do miss that. <laughs> I have fond memories of swimming in Greece. <laughs> But at the time, like, I was captivated by his, his Instagram <laughs> The closest bracket. we got to live sport. Yeah. <laughs> he found a way to make the pandemic work for him. <laughs> not for my heart, though. No, not at all. Uh, Speaking of which, did anyone get any food tonight at Movies After Dark? <laughs> food has been absolutely wonderful. The folks at the Tin Roof have been so phenomenal. Give them a round of applause if you like their food, kids. Um, this, uh, am I meant to sign this? This is amazing. Remember, like, fucking wrestling buddy <gasps> pillows and shit? This is fr uh, called Big Shots. And it's a Silent Bob one. But I don't know if I'm meant to sign it or I'm meant to show people, like, buy this fucking thing. But well, who buy this here? fucking thing. We can take it to bed with you and shit like this. Aww. It's like your little Kamiko. Yeah. But I'll sign it anyway, just in case. Uh, okay, we got another question. Did you get tickets? Did you grab your tickets? Well done. Give it up for him. That was a wonderful question. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Holly. Hi, Holly. Hi. I have a two-part question. Okay. How Evan, are you? Yes. What yes. What character from Ask Your Universe would you like to have its own series? Which character from yes. the Viewers Universe would I like to have yep. their own series? I mean, selfishly, I should say Jay and Silent Bob, because <laughs> then I'll be working a lot. But one of my favorite characters uh, in the world uh, that I've ever created was uh, Randall. So I would love to watch a Randall show, which is essentially like watching a Clerks show, which, I, you know, now at this point in my life, I regret not doing. We did a Clerks cartoon and shit, but I love those characters so much. Like when we were rehearsing on Clerks 3, like I remember saying, fuck, man, I wish we were making Clerks 9. Like, why is this only the third one? I love these characters and shit. So I'd probably go right back to Quick Stop. Most of the stories I tell emanate from quick stop anyway they're all derivations of clerks to some degree they all kind of spin off from there except tusk but um I, I think that's what i would do i think i would go with randall and randall and by default dante as well okay mark if uh, you got to write the movie oh okay or the series mm -hmm. how would you kill him off <laughs> um <laughs> yeah <laughs> Heart no, attacks, but done. No heart attack. I think it would be like, you know how in Pacific Rim, there's the, uh, the, the, the rift at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean yep. that won't ever seal and keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Anal Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker's ass just prolapses and turns inside itself and just, yeah, no, it'll be great. It'll be awesome. It's a hot way to die. <laughs> the hottest way to die. <laughs> yes. Uh, anal yeah. prolapse death. I didn't see that coming. I'm taking that writing award away from you. <laughs> see, you never see it coming because no. it comes from behind. That's true. Oh, shit. <laughs> so sexy. Uh, give it up for her. That's a great Perfect. question. These tickets are yours. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We could do one more for the Mandalorian bookends, or we could vote on favorite questions. Wow, damn. Sounds like vote. Somebody said, one guy said one more. One guy yelled hope. <laughs> Rebellions are I built feel you. Hope. I feel you on that one. Um, I, here, let's do a round of applause. How many people think we give it out based on the three questions we already heard? Put your hands together. And now, how many people will say, just uh, do one more question and give it to that person? One more question. Democracy wins yet again.
What's your name, Captain? Hello, my name is Jesse Campbell. And we'll give it up for Jesse. Hey, Jesse Campbell. Jesse, you have a chance to win these amazing Mandalorian bookends, or this amazing man. Is it is it plural or singular? If it's bookends, uh, it is bookends with an S. So sing, plural. Yeah, I'm just reading, man. Fair enough. Um, all right, here's your chance to walk away with some sweet ass swag from JC himself, proprietor of Scum and Villainy. That guy hopes she wins. He doesn't want you to let him down. Give me your all-star cast for the Supreme Court. Wow. You just earned the bookends, man. Um, all right. This is, I'm going to show my ignorance. How many people on the Supreme Court? <laughs> uh, nine. Nine. I get nine? And, there, and, and any judges I want. Right, Do they have to be judges? Well, we, they have to be wizened, at least. Okay, so they have to be playing actual people who were judges? Or could I just pick nine motherfuckers who would be great on the Supreme Court? And nine they, motherfuckers. Do they, can they, they can be fictional characters, too, right? That is correct. Number one, Batman. There's a motherfucker who knows about justice right there. Number two, Batman. No. Um, let me see. Number Robin. One, Yes. No, Robin's soft on crime. Uh, Batman, Gandalf. Thou shall not pass. This yes, is exactly. Um, let's see. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, the president from Battlestar Galactica. Roslyn. Roslyn Carter. Is that her name, Carter? Oh, no, Laura that Roslyn. was a singer. Laura Roslyn. Laura Roslyn, that's it. Um, not never Jay, no. <laughs> Victor <laughs> Carver. <laughs> the actual human person, Victor Carver. Um, hold on, all right, so how many do I have so far? I'm at four and I get nine? Five more. Five more, all right. Nobody sh say shit, I'm the thing. Fletch. <laughs> He's always real smart in them books. Bugs Bunny, one of the most clever motherfuckers ever existed. Sees right through the shit, can cut right through it. Seems, seems kind of my kind of rabbit. How many more do I get? Three more. Um, let me see. Fuck that quick rabbit. I like bugs. I can literally not think of another rabbit. Who? Rat who is? Oh. Oh, no. Uh, so Jack Reacher. <laughs> Fuck yes. Jack Reacher. Not Jack Reacher, just Reacher. Just Reacher. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's Jack Reacher, then Tom Cruise shows up and nobody wants that. We're talking about fucking Reacher, man. He curbs you to death and he's like, justice. All right, how many more I get? I feel like I'm very male heavy. Shouldn't I bring more women into it? You got it? Laura Roslin. You got one Oh, lady. fucking Princess Leia, of course. I get one more lady. I was gonna say sorceress. I I, I should kind of stay on brand and shit. Alan, Alanis Morissette is God. There's my last judge. Well done. That is my Supreme Court, man. And ironically, they all hate abortion. No. <laughs> they would do justice. You? It's a hard act to follow, Kevin. I mean, but it's like the sky's the limit. I know what you live with Batman, dude. Uh, you can take Batman as well. Batman's just a common sense answer. All right, okay. I got a, I got a plan. Okay. I'm sticking with his plan. Tina Turner. Shaka Khan. <laughs> Aretha Franklin. Mary Wells. Oh my God, I want to go to the Supreme Court concert. Um, Donna Summer. Oh! Excellent fucking choice, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm saying, let's, Diana Ross is the Supreme, she's the head justice. She's the chief justice <laughs> of the Supreme Court. The Supreme's Court. Yes. <laughs> they run the world. Um, Cardi B. Nice. Keeping it fresh. Keeping it Keeping young. It fresh. 
Beyonce. Oh, of course. Um, Big Mama Thornton. How wow. Many I got left. One more. Old One school. more left. Did we count? Did we already count uh, Diana Ross? Gladys fucking Knight. Because here's why. Nobody understands injustice like black lady singers <laughs> who've been fucked over by everybody that has ever been on the planet. And so I want the Supremes Court, who's got no fucking time for your bullshit. Give it up for Mark's answer, ladies Thank and gentlemen. Much. Give it up for that great Thank question. You, he did you proud, your buddy. Go read some books to put in between the bookends. <laughs> Oh, my God, that was delightful. What about you, Bamf, man? You got nine? Oh, gosh. Uh, Judge Dredd. Like... What a great call. Who said that? Andrew. Fucking well done, Andrew. I got, that felt like family feud when they say the answer and everybody's like, Judge oh. Dredd. What are you keeping in the house in case a party breaks out? <laughs> Judge Dredd. <laughs> I was going to say, my two... I think you have to put Charles Xavier on the Supreme Court. Excellent fucking call. And uh, oh my God, he would know if they were guilty he, or not. He knows. Like, yeah. And Daredevil, <laughs> right? And uh, he can listen to their fucking heartbeat. There's another great one. Fuck. I thought Adora. And he Shira. knows the law. Uh -huh. He knows the law. Shira and Shira, Shira. Shira. as well. And you're Adora too. Nah, that's fine. She's ten. <laughs> we don't want to ten year old on the Supreme Court. It is a lifetime appointment, though. That's true. true. She could serve for like eighty years. Yeah, like, where's Dookie Hauser? A like motherfucker at 16 can just show up and run shit. Dookie! Oh, I've still got to keep going. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, okay. We're not letting you off. Uh, Wonder Woman, she's got the lasso of truth. God, that's fucking good, man. That's good, yes. I like your Supreme Court. Uh, what am I at? Xavier, Shira, Wonder Miguel Woman. Miguel Sassoon. The way his hair would look good. Um... Man, no. Jar Jar. I mean, Jar -Jar. yeah, yeah, we'll put Jar Jar on the Supreme Court. Every court needs a jester. <laughs> right? Yeah, poor Jar Jar would get blamed for every bad decision, whether it was his fault or not. <laughs> like, Shit. You're, you're He's responsible. He's like, Misa said no. <laughs> he was. Misa was the dissenting opinion. Oh, <laughs> uh, who else we got? Uh... Kinky Kelly. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Spock, Spock would be good on the says, Supreme Court. He's logical. Uh, lion -O, Lord of the Thundercats. Wow, good call. Very noble. Uh, um, George uh, fucking Carlin. Absolutely. The smartest man Carlin. I ever met in my entire life. Chief Justice Carlin, indeed. I feel like Jean Grey Did you would say be Thanos? Thanos? <laughs> we saw how that went. I feel like Jean Grey would make a good counterpart to uh, to Charles Xavier. Like, they'd work together very well. Compliment one another? Yeah. Until she goes all dark phoenix. Yeah. Until she discovers that Charles fucked with her brain and then blows up half the planet. Yeah, really. Good point. Um, fuck, that's my kind of question, man. Like, I'm really now, I'm gonna go home tonight and instead of trying to have sex with my wife, I'd be like, who would be on your Supreme Court? <laughs> If it could be anybody. <laughs> yes, anybody. M Max Shady in chat says, Judge Harry Stone from Night Court. Oh, that's a great fucking call. Yeah. That's an excellent call. God, this, this you know, I, we did a thing right before we did this. I went on TikTok, and uh, we did a TikTok Live, me and Jay. And I talked about during the TikTok how terrifying TikTok is to me because as an old man, whenever I look at it, I am profoundly fucking, like, moved by the amount of talented people in the world. Something I've always talked about, where I've always been like, hey man, everyone's got something, everyone's got a story to tell. And then when you slide through TikTok, you literally see it in action. And it's, it's sometimes very intimidating, because I'm like, these people are telling more masterful stories in less than two minutes sometimes than I can do in fucking 90 to two hours and stuff. Um, so when I was doing the, the TikTok uh, before we did this, the folks that worked there were walking me through it and stuff. And when we were all done, I was like, yeah, that's just, I, I get it, but that, that's for young people. That's really not for me. And they were like, well, it's a shame because 150,000 people watch this. And I was like, I will fucking masturbate on this. <laughs> what do you mean 150,000? I was like, yeah, the TikTok audience is big. And I was like, oh, my God, how the fuck are we not on TikTok? Shouldn't we do this fucking show on TikTok? 
This TikTok seems to be blowing up, Mark. I don't know if you know this or not. I'm just, I'm trying to keep my Vine account live. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about your ticking attacks. <laughs> Um, well, fuck, man. I guess we're out of show, ladies and gentlemen. Have you had a good time this evening? I cannot thank you enough for coming out. Uh, some fucking thanks across the boards, man. Uh, give it up for the Tin Roof Inn, Movies After Dark, man. How lovely. This has been our home all day. It'll be our home all uh, Comic-Con long. We got more shows coming up tomorrow and the day after and stuff. Um, thank you for, uh, for Dr. Josh Roush for coming all the way down here to shoot for us. <laughs> Boo! Thank you to Banff Man who came all the way fucking down from a space-themed bar in Hollywood to be with us tonight. We'll also be live tomorrow and Saturday at 4 p.m. So yeah. if you're not here, you can watch online. Tell them, good point. I would have totally spaced on that. So tomorrow and Saturday as well, right? Yeah, 4, p 4 to 5 p.m. We're going to be doing live streams from here just to update any new stories that came out. Real short, not like a whole show like this and stuff. Uh, but we're going to do it before, Mark, is before you go for the award tomorrow. Indeed. So I will, I, will, I will reveal on Saturday how Friday night went. Fucking A, you'll be able to tell the story. Find me. Uh, Mark find is me. up for an Eisner, kids. Give him, send him all your best wishes. And I will tell you of the glorious day in which I did not win an Eisner. Um, but... Uh, ah, blah, blah. If you enjoyed the show, ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, it's because of the guy sitting to my left. Give it up for the marvelous Mark Bernard and everybody. And that is Fat Man Beyond for this very special edition from fucking San Diego Comic Con 2022. I'm Kevin Smith. I am Mark Bernard. Tune in next time. Same fat time. Same fat channel. Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. Happy Conic Con, everybody. Good night. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Sal Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Cheers, you!